Hey guys, I know I've been talking about this video for a long time, but the day has finally arrived where I've completed my Arduino solar tracker that is capable of charging a cell phone. I know I've had some delays in getting this project out. My 3D printer uh, died and I had to get a new one. Also with this quarantine stuff, nothing's been fun. So I hope you can enjoy this video. Um, something you can do at home while you're stuck at home. Uh, build a solar tracker, charge your phone, it'll be fun. Let's talk about the parts we're gonna need for this project. As always, I will be leaving a link for these parts in the description so that you can find them on your own. Starting off, we have a five RPM gear motor and this will be used to direct the solar panels. Speaking of the solar panels, we have two each, 110 by 60, six volt panels that we will be using. Got a blocking diode and a switch. Here we have a TP4056 lithium ion charger. Uh, you'll wanna make sure when you buy this to get the one that has four pads. Uh, this is the upgraded model. This version has a low battery protection circuit that prevents current from leaving the battery if the voltage gets too low. We'll also be using an 18650 lithium ion battery. Here we have a 3 volt to 5 volt boost converter and we'll be using this to charge our phones using the battery. We'll also be using an Arduino Nano. and an L9110 motor control board. And for tracking the sun, we'll be using a couple photoresistors and some 1K resistors. For prototyping this project, I'll be using an Arduino Uno and a breadboard. You'll also want to have plenty of jumper wires and a good multimeter. You will also need a soldering iron, a hot glue gun, and a 3D printer. If you don't have a 3D printer, You'll need a friend that has one. One thing I forgot, an 18650 battery holder. Now let's talk about these photoresistors for a few minutes. They generally come in a big bag, but just because they come in the same bag and they're labeled with the same part number does not necessarily mean that each photoresistor will perform the same under the same light conditions. So what you wanna do is grab several of these photoresistors and compare them to each other using various light conditions. So you're going to want to set your multimeter to measure resistance and as you can see right now this um, photoresistor is reading about 2.9 kilo ohms and the important thing is to test these in the exact same manner to hold them in the same location and to repeat the exact same lighting conditions. You'll see as I turn one light on, it drops to around two kilo ohms. When I turn the second light on, it goes down to about one and a half. Now, if I were to bring this in close contact with the light, it would go even further. One way to do this experiment would be to use something like a flashlight and hold each of the photoresistors different distances away from the light to see how they react. And we'll want to put all this data into a table and compare the resistors. So keep track of which ones are which. This table outlines the results of my measurement experiment. As you can see, I tested all eight photocells in three different light conditions. And you'll notice that the values can vary quite a bit. Let's take, for example, uh, photo cells number two and three. Here you can see that uh, one is one kilo ohm and one is two kilo ohm, so almost a factor of two. If we look in the bright conditions here as well, um, the same thing. Under bright conditions, one was 0.6 kilo ohms, the other was 1.2. So the trick here is we want to find two photo cells that are very close in value at all three light conditions. So after looking at the data, I'm gonna choose photo cells number three and number six. As you can see, under all three light conditions, they have approximately the same value. Now, most people just skip this step. Uh, this is very important, however, if you want your solar tracker 
to point in the right direction. All right, now that we've selected the two photocells that are most like each other, we're going to set them up in our breadboard and write the first piece of Arduino code to see how they react differently to different lights. So we have each leg, one leg of each photoresistor connected to the 5 volts coming from the Arduino. And we have one leg of the resistors connected to the ground, which is also connected to the Arduino. The other legs of the resistor and photodiodes will share uh, with the jumper terminals for channel A0 and channel A1. Let's go write some code and test this thing out. Really quickly though, you'll want to notice that I've oriented these photoresistors so that they're pointing away from each other, about a 30 degree angle between the two. Uh, that way when we shine our flashlight over them to simulate the sun being in different positions, we can see how our Arduino code will react. This first bit of code is going to be pretty simple. Essentially we're going to be reading the analog values from each photoresistor and comparing them to each other. So let's start off with our integers. We're going to have an integer for the left and right sensors. We'll also have a dead band integer and set it equal to 30 and I'll explain that in just a second. Uh, in our setup loop we're just going to start the serial monitor so that we can see what's going on. In our main loop we're going to read channel A0 and assign that to be the value for the left sensor. In the right sensor we will read the value of channel A1. Then we're going to have a command to display our data. So we're going to print the left is equal to, and then the left sensor value. Then we will have the right is equal to the right sensor value. And see how we have a print line here that will hit a carriage return so that we move to the next line. Now here's where our logic will kick in a little bit. So if the value of the left sensor is greater than the right sensor plus the dead band value, then that means that the left sensor is brighter and we're going to print the command turn to the left. And conversely, if the right sensor is greater than the left sensor plus the dead band value, then we will command to turn to the right. Now the purpose of this dead band is to really keep the solar tracker from moving more than it needs to. So if you imagine that the solar tracker is pointed perfectly at the sun, the left sensor and right sensor are going to have approximately the same value, but because they're analog channels they might have a little bit of noise, so it might keep toggling from left sensor being brighter to right sensor being brighter, and that way the uh, solar tracker is always seeking the optimum position and therefore running the motor which is doing the opposite of what we want. We want it to be charging the batteries not draining the batteries. So we add this dead band so that when it's pretty close to on position it will stop tracking. Now if we find that the solar tracker is not quite aligning with the sun we may want to uh, reduce the amount of dead band and if we find that the solar tracker is continually seeking left to right we might want to increase that dead band. So this last condition here is when the solar tracker is in the happy place. We're going to tell it not to move. This would mean that the right sensor and the left sensor are within the dead band of each other. And then we're going to print a space we're going to wait a second and then we're going to watch the new values. So this will make a little more sense. Uh, let's run the serial monitor and see what happens. Okay, I've finished uploading the code. We're going to run the serial monitor. And as you can see right now the left and right values are tracking very close to each other. They're within the dead band of 30 from each other so the command is 
telling it not to turn. So right now we're reading about a hundred on each sensor. I'm going to cover the left sensor with my finger and you can see it drops down to about 29. I'm going to do the same oh, with the right sensor and now the left sensor is greater the right sensor is down to 21 so it's commanding us to turn to the left. When I remove my finger they equalize and it tells you not to turn. So now I'm going to use my flashlight and I'm going to shine it on the left sensor. As you can see it increased quite a bit. 439 and the right also increased because it is seeing some of the light from that sensor. Now as I move the flashlight to the middle they start to equalize and now it's commanding not to turn. I'm going to continue moving the flashlight towards the right sensor and now that value is much higher and it's telling us to turn right. Now the sun's obviously brighter than my flashlight so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the bulb directly on top of the right sensor just to show the full range of measurement. As you can see we are close to a thousand on the value so 981 with the flashlight held as close to the sensor as possible and all the way down to 26 with my finger on it. So it's just showing that we have made a good voltage divider, we've picked the right resistor to use in our circuit and we have a good range of analog values. Now that our code is working to detect the direction of the light, let's connect the motor and see if we can modify the code so that when one of the light sensors is favored, the motor will turn in that direction. So I went ahead and soldered some wires to the motor. As you can see, we've got a little red dot here, and I've connected the red wire to that side of the motor. On the L9110, I've connected the black and red wires to the channel A input and I've connected the inputs to this chip to Arduino channels 5 and 6. I chose 5 and 6 because they are capable of pulse width modulation and that will be important if we want to control the speed of the motor. And then I've also connected the 5 volt and power to our breadboard. So here on the right we have the code that will control the gear motor that will turn the solar tracker. It's basically the same code we used earlier but with a few added commands to control the motor. The first thing I did to this code on the left here was to remove all of the serial commands because with our solar tracker we will not be connected to a monitor. Um, the other thing I did was add an output channel for the left command and right command. I picked uh, the Arduino digital pins 5 and 6 because they're capable of pulse width modulation and therefore we can control the speed that the motor turns. I've got a integer called power and this is set at 200 so I'm going to be using this as my speed control. If, if we find that the uh, stepper motor is not turning fast enough, I can turn this all the way up to 255. If uh, we find that it's moving too quickly, we can obviously make this number a little bit smaller. Here in the setup section, I've declared pin modes for pins 5 and 6 to be output so that we can control the motor. And here in the loop we have our same left and right sensor read commands. And here's where it gets a little bit different. So we still have the same if statements if the left sensor is greater than the right sensor plus the dead band. Then we are going to tell it to seek the light. So we're going to tell it to travel left. So we're going to give the power command to the left pin on the motor controller and the right pin we're going to give a command of zero or no power. Uh, if the situation is flipped, if the right sensor is greater than the left sensor in the dead band, then we're going to give the right pin full power and the left pin zero. And in the case where 
the left and right are within the dead band of each other, we're going to command both uh, pins to output zero, and therefore the motor will not turn. Now we want this loop to update rather quickly, so I have only have a uh, 10 millisecond delay, and then it will repeat this process. And once again, if we've set our dead band correctly, the motor should seek pretty well and uh, not move back and forth too much. So there you have it. The code is very simple. Uh, we'll be uploading this to the Arduino Uno to test it out. And should the code work, we will upload the same exact code to the Arduino Nano when we assemble the uh, solar tracker. Let's hook it up and see how it's working. All right, so if I block the light from one sensor, you can see the motor is turning very slowly in one direction. And if I block the light from the other sensor, you can see it turning back the other way. When both have equal light, the motor stays put. Now where I'm just using very small solar panels, I can get away using a very small little gear motor for my project. So that might lead to the question, well, what if I'm doing this on a larger scale, say 100 or 200 watts worth of solar panels, and I want to design a system to track the sun in the same way? Well, the good news is that whether you're using a tiny gear motor or a linear actuator like this one, the code is exactly the same. And while you can use this L9110 board to control the linear actuator, I do recommend that if you're doing a real project that you upgrade to one of these l 298N boards. They function almost exactly the same but can handle quite a bit more power. So in order to hold all these parts and have them move with the sun, we're going to need some sort of frame. And since I have a 3D printer, I'm going to be printing a frame that can hold these components. So here's my initial design. I've got something 2 inches by 5 inches and a hole in the middle that will be large enough that the motor can go through the base. Also have enough room to mount on the other side of the base, the battery. And on the top side, we'll be mounting our charger, our Arduino, motor controller, and the battery charger that's gonna to connect to the solar panels. I'm kind of think in this kind of layout. I designed my plastic parts using Fusion 360. I'll be slicing them using the Cura software and printing them on my ANET A8 3D printer. Uh, this first piece here is the base that the end of the motor shaft will stick into. Um, as you can see, I kind of designed the hole to mirror the shape of the shaft and just have a few thousandths of clearance. The uh, other part here is the cradle that will be holding the solar panels will sit on these um, angled edges. The motor will fit through this hole and, and rest upon it. Uh, as you can see, I've put some holes to allow the wires to pass through without having to go around the back. I've also put a hole for the wires to come from the battery up from below. Uh, put some mounts in for the motor controller and as well a mount for the uh, lithium battery charger right here. Um, this piece here will sit on top of the motor and I will have one of the photo resistors on each side. As you can see they're pointing away from each other so that will help with the solar tracking. And just for fun I've configured where the resistors will go, so it'll look kind of like a smiley face with the resistors here and the photo resistors for eyeballs. So here are the parts all printed out. Basically the motor will fit into that hole and be held upright. The cradle will slide over the top of the motor. And then this cap will fit on top of the motor and hold the photo resistors. So let me explain this beautiful professional looking schematic that I drew in Microsoft Paint. 
Uh, we have the two solar panels. They're connected in parallel, so positive to positive, negative to negative. And then we're going to feed the positive line through the blocking diode into the battery charger and connect the negative to the negative terminal. There are two uh, terminals labeled B plus and B minus on the battery charger and those go directly to the battery themselves. Uh, from the output of the board we're going to run through a switch, two pins on a switch, and we're going to lead into the 3 to 5 volt converter. Now we're also going to connect the negative from the battery charger to this converter. Now this converter will take any input between 3 volts and 5 volts and output 5 volts. So we're going to use this to power all of our logic and our motor control board. So we've got the positive here going to multiple places. We're having to go to one leg of each photoresistor. We're having to go to the 5 volt pin on the Arduino and we're going to go to the power pin on the motor control board. Now uh, the uh, negative line is just going to be about the same. We have it go to the ground pin on the Arduino. We're going to have it go to one of the legs of the resistors and we're going to have it go to the ground pin on the motor controller. Okay, our left sensor Right where the photoresistor and the resistor contact each other, we're going to tee off a line that's going to go to analog channel 0. And analog channel 1 is going to go to the photoresistor on the right. We're also going to connect digital output 5 and digital output 6 to these pins on the motor control board. Last but not least, we'll hook up our motor to the motor control board. First thing I did here was install the resistors and photoresistors on the dome. As you can see, this isn't my prettiest soldering job, but I, there was very limited space. So definitely recommend getting a helping hand to do this. And as you can see, we've got our little smiley face. Next, I'm going to flip this frame over. And I'll be gluing, hot gluing, the battery holder to the bottom of the frame. Next, I installed the motor into the frame, and it fit nice and tight, so I'm not going to use any glue. Next, I've added the sensor cap on top of the motor. And as you can see, we've got the wires coming out the hole in the back. Okay, now I've installed my motor control board. I decided to remove the pin headers uh, just to make it look cleaner, but you don't have to do that. And I've routed all the wires through this hole that will feed over to the Arduino over here. And then these two red and black wires, of course, go to the motor to control it. Now the voltage from the battery is going to change, but this little boost converter is going to ensure that we always have 5 volts output at the USB connection. The battery will connect here to these two pads and we'll use this for charging our cell phone. But if we flip this over, you'll also see these two little pads on the back, uh, right here and right here. We're going to solder some wires there so that we can steal power for our Arduino and for the motor control board. When you're done, the positive should be on the same side as the positive on this terminal. So red on the top, black on the bottom, just like so. So now I've soldered up the Arduino. This is something you'll definitely want to do after you flash it. Um, got the two analogs coming from the photocells and the two PWM channels going over here to the motor control board. Also installed some power cables that we will jumper over here. Okay, next I've taken the uh, red and black wire from the battery holder, passed them through this hole, and I've connected them to the battery charger. The terminals marked B plus and B minus, 
as you can see right there. I've also got another black and red wire coming off. Uh, this one I've routed through a little switch so that I can turn power off and on. And these wires will connect to the boost converter. Right, it's starting to look a little bit like spaghetti, but I've got all of the ground wires bundled together, all of the 5 volt. I've got everything connected as in the schematic, except for the solar panels, which we will first test this thing out to make sure it works. All right, so I went ahead and installed the battery into the holder. I also installed the base onto the bottom of the motor. Next thing to do is power this thing up and see if it works. So I've got my flashlight here. I'll start by shining it on the left side. As you can see, it's tracking. We'll move it over to the right. And it follows it back. The last thing to do will be to hook up our solar panels. As you can see, I am putting these panels in parallel. I'm going to route these wires through the holes on the back before I solder them to the second panel. But as you can see here, I've installed a diode, and that will help prevent the uh, battery from draining when it's dark outside. I've got the solar panels installed. I've got a light shining on them here, and as you can see, I've removed the battery. But what you can tell is that by this light on, on this charger, that it is getting power. So it looks like everything's working. Next step, I will uh, get out the hot glue gun and secure everything down and make it look a little better. Okay, here's the final product put all together. Let's uh, test it one more time using this light here. As you can see, it's tracking pretty well. Alright, so it's about 9.45 in the morning. I just checked the voltage on the batteries and we're reading about 3.66 volts. So we're going to let this thing charge for a little while and come back and check it and then we will see if we can uh, plug in a cell phone and charge that too. As you can see, the sky is not too cooperative today. I'm going to wait for this bunch of clouds to pass and then we will plug in the phone and see what happens. Okay, so now I've plugged in my phone. The sun is about to emerge from the clouds. My battery is currently at 69% and I've put the phone into airplane mode to let it charge a little quicker. So I'll come back in a little bit and see how it's doing. So after about a half an hour, my phone has charged from 69% all the way up to 85%. I did take a reading on the battery on the solar charger it did drop to 3.1 volts, which tells me that the battery charges faster than these little solar panels can keep up with. So should I want to continue charging my phone, I would need to give this little guy uh, another hour or so in the sun before I plug the phone back in. So while this guy might be capable of keeping a cell phone alive, it really wasn't designed to generate a lot of power. Uh, the purpose of this project was to demonstrate how easy it is to control a solar tracker and use a little bit of Arduino code to do so. If I were going to do this again and wanted to scale it up, uh, I would use something more like this 5 watt or 10 watt panel. Uh, but regardless of the panel you use, the principles are going to be the same. You might have a bigger motor, you might use a linear actuator, but the code is going to be very similar. Every time I do a project like this, I learn something new. And this project was definitely no exception. In this project, I realized that not all lithium batteries are created equally. There are a lot of uh, companies out there that uh, take you for a ride. So look forward to a future video where I explain how to tell a dud from the real thing.